Well, hey there, guys. This is your favorite backyard geographer again. I was out in the garage with my, my junk, and I thought of you. You know, as a backyard geographer, it should be as no surprise that I love topographic maps. In fact, I have probably one of the largest private collections this side of the Mississippi. But um, I wanted to share these two in particular with you today because I think that looking at older topographic maps is a great way to understand the history and culture of certain areas. So join me today as I take a look at, I love this, this is a map of beautiful downtown Burbank in California, dating 1926. So I have two maps that I want to share with you, of the same area, Burbank, California. The first one, this map is dated 1926. What's really exciting about these topographic maps is that the United States Geological Survey, the Mineralogical Survey, and a couple other groups would go out and resurvey areas and see as things change, you'd update the map. Kind of like today with Google Earth. You know, with Google Earth, we're able to see the most recent digital imagery and we're able to see the progression of and how things change. But we used to do it by maps. And many of these maps took a couple of years to make to begin with. But I chose this one in particular in Burbank because this is a really great, great way to see what it looked like back then. So I'd like to point out a couple of my favorite things that are on here that are very iconic, uh, both today and in 1926. So you can see there's a very large black spot right pretty much in the middle of the map. And it's labeled as Universal City. Well, that was Universal Studios as we know it today. And we can notice that all the way around it, there's not a whole lot that's happening around this area. We can see that there are some simple housing you know, developments that have, you know, within the surrounding region, but it's a very vacant landscape. A couple things I thought were interesting is you can see that there's the, um, Sherm on Sherman Way, there's the Pacific Electric Southern California uh, light rail system, which runs down Chandler today. And we can also see that Edison, Southern California Edison has a tremendous amount of energy facility plants that are fueling their electric lines for their trains. You know, when we talk about just in, in California history, you know, we remember that there was a light rail system that ran in California, specifically Los Angeles. Los Angeles had more light rail or electric, you know, trains than San Francisco and New York combined. And there, it was a very important part of its development in history because these light rails provided electricity to some of these, some of these areas that otherwise wouldn't have electricity. But anyway, as we come back, we can really see how barren this area is. You know, to kind of put things in perspective, uh, you've got Coenga Peak right down here. Notice all the contour lines are very close to one another, meaning it's very steep. On the opposite side, on, you know, on the bottom part of this map, that's where the Hollywood sign is today, right? So we can really see how nice and, and vacant is. Another thing I'll point out later also here is the Hollywood Lake. It's a very small lake, but we'll know that it's something different on the next map. So fast forward about 20 years, enter Burbank, California, 1941. Notice it's a lot different than the previous image that we saw. A couple of reasons why, population boom, obviously. Uh, we can see now that all the addition of these new streets, new streets and intersections, and a couple of big things that I wanted to point out again, you know, starting in the middle, Universal Studios is still there, but notice to the right of it is the first National Studios, which we know today is Warner Brothers. And the smallest studio on there, as we can see right here, which is one of my favorites, the Walt Disney Studio, 1941. Then we move over here all the way to the left-hand side of the map, we can see there's Republic Studios. And then at the top of this map, the northern part, notice all the black squares. Well, that's part of the Lockheed Air Terminal. And what's interesting about Lockheed, especially at this time in 1941, is that it kind of went missing on the maps because Lockheed, as well as Disney Studios and a couple other of the studios themselves during World War II, were housing uh, not just some of the repaired vehicles for World War II, like the tanks and airplanes, but also Lockheed was making some of those airplanes. So there's some great imagery of how they made Lockheed disappear. And what they did is they created these canvases that had mesh foliage on them. So when you were flying by to take aerial photography, it just looked like fake movie houses and, and grass, and it, it would look, it was a prop and they were able to cover the entire airport like that. But nonetheless, we can continue to look at just how things change. Notice all the introduction of schools on the right-hand side, left-hand side. So maybe you went to some of these schools and now you can kind of put in place of where and when they were developed. Something else I wanted to point now, I mentioned the smaller Hollywood Lake before, but now it's the Hollywood Reservoir. Notice how large it is. And what's interesting about that 
storage at reservoir itself is that it was the sister to the St. Francis Dam Reservoir, which was built in Santa Clarita, which we know, you know, it broke in Santa Clarita, and it, it was very, uh, it was quite a travesty, one of the largest. It's ranked the uh, largest man-made natural disaster in current history in, in the state of California. But this was built at the exact same time, and as you know, the Hollywood Reservoir still exists today. And then right over here, we can see there's the Don Lee television station, which is where the Hollywood sign is. And then over here it does say that it's got a planetarium, and that's the Griffith Observatory. So again, the, the reason I'm sharing these maps too with you is because I think that Burbank is a, a very common place of interest because that's where, as we noticed, some of the major studios were located. But to be able to see that before and after, just 20 years, it's really not a big difference in time, but to see how we went from a rural countryside where people were probably hunting bear, uh, which was a very common thing to do. I know, one of the, <laughs> it's kind of weird to think, like Santa Clarita, the last California brown bear was shot on a movie set uh, in, in Santa Clarita. It's like, you know, this was a very different time. And then here we just flash forward to the 1940s, and next thing you know, it's turning into a mini megalopolis. And we've got cities where they still have light rail systems, but they also have the Amtrak and bigger systems, airports, schools, and it's just to see these areas grow. And then if we were to pull up a map of today, it would be completely different. There's hardly any space left because all of these areas are just jam packed with residents and, and communities. So maybe you've been to Burbank. Maybe you saw something on one of these maps that was interesting to you or something you had a question or a thought, or maybe you saw something that I didn't point out and you want to share. Be sure to comment that below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll talk soon. So I have two maps I want to share. Okay, I was thinking. Sorry, I'm trying to get like closer. She's trying to get comfortable.